Hello and welcome back to Caves of Cut. We're gonna do some ruin diving. I love me a good ruin dive. You, you discover a lair, right? Can't take even one step. Legendary beetle bum. Uh, interesting. I think beetle bums. I can't remember what beetle bums do. I think beetle bums are like one of the few things that actually rob you, given an opportunity. What I mean is, if there's something on the screen, are these uh, the things that give you uh, mono? Don't really want to deal with that. <clears throat> um, yeah, if there's something on the screen that uh, you know hangs that that you want to keep, that the beetle bum will g generally steal it. Okay, um, Temporal Fugue time. There we go. Easy mode. Engaged. Look at all the stuff going on here. Let's, uh, slam. And, uh, do, a, like, a discharge. Does a nice chunk of damage. And flurry. That's one of them taken care of. And then conk the next one. And then perma stun them. And then we're gonna go ahead and just hit the next one and then we killed them before the last one came back recovering from the slam and that's kind of how you take care of that assuming of course you have the appropriate av to do so oh speaking of av uh, i'm no longer hanging out in bethesda susa so i should probably put my refractory back on we are no longer dabbling with uh the thermo cask and i think i probably will disassemble it It'd be nice if I could figure out how to make it, um, but uh, I'm sorry, y'all. The dream is dead. Sorry. It's a it's an AI microcontroller. I, I could really use those to add jacked to some of my other things. Oh yeah, I got this Palladium Room Tuba Kish Recoiler. Could be cool. Could be fun. Um, so I want to add, I kind of want to add scoped to my handrail, and then eventually if I get, uh, some metamorphic polygel, I can, uh, like duplicate this thing, because that's quite a pretty expensive weapon, and I would like to have a second one for my, uh, guns akimbo. But besides that, not sure what else would be viable. I mean, you could add jacked to the crystal war hammer. That'd be nice, but like honestly, it uses so little energy. It doesn't. It's like one of the least viable candidates. Let's add scoped. Can't tinker with hostiles nearby. Okay, buddy. Why can I not? Why is? I guess I was like equal distance away from a bunch of stuff. Okay. Not a good idea to be hitting snail mothers in caustic juice. Scoped, adding scoped to my weapon will also really help. Um, wow, we're really high temperature right now. Okay, um, I'm not feeling super good about this. So let's Temporal Fugue. That is basically my panic button. Just pressing the wrong button. Uh, adding Scoped will help when it comes to my Temporal Clones, because then they're less likely to hit me by accident. Still, like, they're, they're not, like, there's not a 0% chance, but, you know, it's something. Am I getting anything from killing these? No. I don't get any uh, experience. Not even from the ant queen. That sucks. Okay, can we tink uh, tinker up some stuff now? Scoped. Can't tinker with hostiles nearby. God damn it. Probably a good idea to like wait for your temperature to come down. 
Might actually be a really good idea to wear one of these kaleidoscope muffs because they they will offer me a little bit of resistance. Right now, I think the resistance is more likely to be helpful than uh, the AV because the fire just kind of goes right through it. What material? Oh, right. What I wonder what the what does the chrome mantle do for us? It adds a bit more resistances. So let's go ahead and uh, equip this. Oh, well that, that's going to drop our weight. I don't actually think I can do that. I don't think I can really... Um, like, justify that. I guess, joke's on me, uh, ha putting that... If I had the, uh, the fire armor, it would offer me quite a lot of fire resistance, and then this, this area would be kind of a joke, wouldn't it? Is there, like, better... Um, resistances to getting your arms chopped off because like that that historic site is a real pain and I would like to explore it but it being filled to the brim with uh, monsters that just like disarm you c completely is not great if I break this does it give me bone dust no okay um Kinda wouldn't mind putting on two pairs of Kaleidocera muffs. What is this doing for us? Plus one agility. Yeah, I mean, it offers us quite a lot of AV, but again, I think that it, the resistances are gonna be good for this for this zone. Um, we'll see if that ends up hurting me. My AV's at 16 right now, so like basically it's the same as if I was wearing the Thermo cask. In fact, it pretty much exactly is. So I, I'm okay. It'll uh, our AV will only really matter if uh, I go up against like say more Crocs and like dismembering things. Oh yeah, I meant to um, modify our weapon. You better not tell me. You better not tell me that you can't do it. Nano Neuromator, uh, Nano Nero Animator adding jacked would be really nice. I, I really do have to start animating things. Kind of thinking I might disassemble the Dithermo Beam. I know that sucks. Um, it'd be more fun to kind of double down on a really, like, are you kidding me? Let me tinker for damn sake. Oh my god, dude. Like, Please. It's like, it takes me forever to even find this stupid thing, and then you're gonna tell me? There we go. Scoped. That's all I wanted. Jeez. Jesus. What are you doing? Just like a little lizard hanging out. Uh, alright. Weird artifact. I love finding a weird artifact. Flamethrower. Ugh. It's quite heavy. Um, but I will take it. I seem to recall the flamethrower is really good. Like, I really liked the flamethrower last time I used it. I can't remember why. It just seemed really good. <laughs> I mean, I think it's on the same level as the Dithermo Beam, in a way. Let's get this... Do I want a canteen? Sure. Good for carrying acid. Excuse me, is that the legendary? Yeah, it is. Loved by grazing hedonists and insects. Hated by Sephardim and pariahs. That's actually kind of tempting. My rep with insects is already not great. Grazing, grazing hedonists, a little bit of a bummer. Grazing, oh. Okay, you didn't blame me for that. That's good. Uh, kind of a bummer to lose rep with grazing hedonists. Um, you know, they can be pretty powerful, but I'm pretty sure beetle bums are, like, the go-to, right? They're, they're the ones. They're, they're, like, the best grazing hedonists. As I understand it. So it's not a big deal if I lose a bit of rep there. What was that? I'll go fung- fugues. Fugues. Um, getting some rep with the Svardim wouldn't be a bad idea, and Pariahs is pretty good. So, I, I think I am gonna kill this lad. 
go ahead and conk them. There we go. Uh, we were at zero with grazing hedonists, so now we are not liked by them. We are despised by insects, that's fine. Sphardim are now indifferent to us, that's kind of nice. That's kind of a trade, I don't know. Pariah rep is not bad. Do we have anything to spend? We have some mutation points. I did level up. Can't level up my Temporal Fugue. I feel like leveling up Temporal Fugue is no longer really worth it. I might start throwing points into multiple arms. Except I can't do that. <laughs> uh, funny. Might uh, start adding points to double muscled then, in that case. So hey, let's uh, let's actually do some ruin diving. I think I did come here, and I think there was a reason I stopped. Like I didn't, I didn't, I stopped exploring because there was some. Oh, this might have been it. Might have been because of the uh, goats. I can't remember. There was a ruin I stopped exploring at one point, and I can't really remember why. There's something, like, semi-dangerous about it. What was that that just happened now? You know what? I need to really turn off uh, Ignore Trivial Monsters, because Trivial Monsters at a, a certain point are not so trivial anymore. Ignore enemies less than none. What? Oh. Maximum auto move. Ignore enemies less than none. There we go. I think that change, I, I'm going to make double sure because I don't want to. Okay, yeah, good. We're no longer going to ignore anything. Because, you know, like, certain at a certain point when you're at level 30, um, trivial monsters include things that can, like, teleport you and breathe caustic breath on you. And, yeah, those things are easy enough to deal with, but if your character is ignoring them while you're auto-exploring, kind of dangerous. Okay. You know, we could start picking up these steel bucklers. These are what are, like, we can put these on our arm, and we have quite a lot of um, extra arm space. What is doing that? Yeah, let's start equipping these. Uh, is there another arm? How come I only have three arms? Oh, Gleaming Band of Ur Tinker Home. And I believe that that is like an excellent, excellent item that I will never take off, basically. It's, uh, it's items like that that make you appreciate having extra arms. I can't believe these, uh, what is it, Livid Creepers are still giving me XP. Testament to just like how insanely valuable they are as creatures. Stun Gas Grenade? Sure, I don't know. Take the grenade from to the east. Um, do we have a bunch of artifacts? To, okay, we have some artifacts. Airfoil, stun gas grenade. Time dilation grenade. There's a bunch of trash here. You know what? I have a, I have quite a lot of ex, um, skill points. I think I, I think it's time to take trash divining. Customs and folklore. Oh, I already have trash divining. Oops. Okay, never mind. Did I take that and then go back to Golgotha? That seems like something I would do. We have like almost a little alchemist's uh, base down here. There's like flash mines down here that are confusing me. Get out of here. Yeah, flashbang miner. Look at that. It's like I know. It's like I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes. I do really love. Someone was saying in the comments that you know, ruin diving in cud is like one of my favorite things to do. I I think that um, basically everything else in cud is like secondary, is is just used as an excuse to ruin dive. I think it's like the most fun thing to do. Basically, I love it. It's so much fun. There's all kinds of crazy, weird stuff to, to discover, and it never stops. Like, it's it's always cool. Um, it's, like, honestly, I, I've, I've played quite a lot of RPGs, and, you know, 
Um, this is going to get real for a second. Caves of Cud is kind of ruined RPGs for me. Like, I'm not kidding. Um, after, after having played quite a lot of Cud, I, like, seek out other RPGs looking for something even approaching the same kind of experience. Whenever you take damage, there's a 15 to 20 percent chance you start phasing. Can use intimidate. I already have intimidate. Whenever you drop below 30 percent, you oh that's kind of nice. It's a nice little panic button there. Sure. I mean, it's I, I wouldn't make this recipe again, but it's good for now. Um, you know, I'll seek out that 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 same kind of experience, the same satisfaction, or like maybe dopamine uh, inducing kind of like. Uh, progression and world exploration and uh, you know like nothing else even comes close it's really weird like you know I'll, I'll, I'll grab you know these huge outlandishly ambitious uh, RPGs that are like super well re you know, renowned and have like a bazillion game awards and you know like they're on uh, this game is Skyrim, but with this, and I'm like, okay, that sounds, yeah, I mean, I don't like Skyrim, but I'll try it. It's, you know, that's, that tells me big open world with some, you know, lots of stuff to do and a satisfying progression, and I jump into it, and it's like, oh my god, I find this, like, beyond tedious. Like, I'm not gonna name names, it would be rude to do so, I'm not gonna just, like, uh, basically poop on a bunch of games because they might be someone's favorite game and I'm not going to do that. But like, man, I just, I find it uh, surreal almost. Like, uh, you know, playing this game, it's got like 15 bajillion awards and I'm just like, eh, it's fine, I guess. I don't know, it's not, it doesn't even hold a match to ruin diving though. There's all kinds of cool stuff to find. Where's my, like, weirdo device that I don't even know what it does after having examined and correctly identified it and then, you know, also read the description and it tells me in basically a different language that it's, like, uh, layered versions of someone's uh, inspired or uh, imagined cold steel with uh, intersecting dimensional, you know... I, like it's just it's all kind of weirdo and 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 in, you know there's some um, in-game imagined function for that that it does actually kind of function and nothing else really even approaches that the imagination it's really just the imagination in code that sets it above um so many other games i guess you know like i find simple things satisfying in code as well like just like oh Crystal gear. Love it. Love crystal gear. I love just getting better armor and weapons. Love it. Bigger number better. Love that. Don't I never really get tired of bigger number better. It's always satisfying when you make your your bigger number better. But you know, like I'll I'll get other RPGs and that's kind of like just all they've got. They just kind of have bigger number better and uh, you know, maybe maybe now it has a different animation, and that's fine. But I don't think the different animation really does as much for me as, like, I found this weird artifact and examined it, and it was a flamethrower. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe that says something about me. I don't know. Good? I don't know. Maybe. Bad? Probably. Oh, what the heck is that? This is a norm normality gas elder nullbeard. They are not enemies to me. I think that the nullbeard got very angry with that mushroom when it sprayed spores on it. And you know what? I don't blame you, nullbeard. That's the kind of thing you can expect in Caves of Cud is uh, a lizard uh, enacting vengeance on a mushroom. Can't get that in Skyrim. I don't know. Maybe you can. Okay, we're gonna conk them. Hey, I leveled up and I'm inspired again. We're gonna make another meal. This is what we're doing. Honestly, this is gonna be the next few episodes. I hope you guys are down. 
It's just me talking absolute garbage and then also making cooking cooking along with the big simple, you know? Um, whenever you take damage, there's a 16 to 20% chance you gain 8 strength. Jesus. Whenever you drop below 30% HP, you reflect 100% damage the next three times you take damage within. Uh, that sounds better than it is. Yeah, I like this 20% chance to just go Hulk mode. Oops, I got a paper cut. <laughs> Sounds like fun. I think the thing that, you know, there's a couple things that set Caves of Cud apart from other experiences is that it doesn't just like use R RNG as a crutch. Like it's not good enough to just like put a bunch of stuff and then uh, allow for dice to be rolled so that, you know, ooh, yay, I, you know, I, I got a, one to ten percent chance of every time I do a thing, maybe my character will sip some tea. Oh, that's so random. I mean, it's sure it is. It's fun, I guess. But like, you know, could um, go. The devs have gone out of their way to ensure that all of the rare random things that happen are all kind of interesting in their own right. You know, like it's it's we're not mixing colors. Let me, let me put it, let me try and put it this way. A lot of games that are RNG and use procedural generation are just kind of mixing colors. And when you're mixing colors, you kind of always end up with brown. Do you know what I mean by that? No matter, it's like you mix a bunch of colors and then you just got brown. Cool. Brown's boring. I don't like brown. I want something more interesting. Caves of Cud, it's not mixing colors. It's combining two colors to make a color palette. Like red and blue. Mix them together, and they don't really make a... I mean, they make purple. I guess purple's fine. That's... Okay, bad example. All right. Uh, 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 okay. Green and orange or something. I don't know. I don't know what that does. But I'm pretty sure that those... I'm pretty sure it's complementing colors. So, like, red and green would make a not great color. I have to drop some stuff right now. And I'm actually... I think what I'm doing is I'm uh, looking for my... Scrap... Because I just picked up some scrap to uh, disassemble it, and I'm not finding it. Oh, maybe I, it was the albino ape pelt that I picked up. Oh, I really need to. <laughs> um, I wish there was a maybe a uh, like quick button for this. Because, like, uh, the main reason I'm not using the Nano Neuro Animator is because it's a pain to, to use. Oh, we're, we're actually fine. I think that it said we were overburdened, but then I disassembled a bunch of stuff, so that's fine. Like, automatically. I didn't do that intentionally. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and disassemble this, and this, and this. Um... I kind of lost my my train of thought. Oh yeah, remember like four or five episodes ago, I was mid thought and then I um, forgot what I was saying and then something else happened and it was, yeah. Uh, I remembered what I was trying to, what I was, what I was trying to uh, get across. What is happening here? Oh, is that a mimic? It is a mimic. <laughs> mimic trying to pretending to be water. That's fun. I like that. Um, I was I was gonna talk about f cooking and f and food. Um, there's a couple of things that hold me back from like really making use of cooking and food. And here's the thing. I know I know people are gonna get annoyed with me because cooking and food in Caves of Cud is like hugely. Hello, helicopter. The helicopter's being very loud and annoying. Um, it's very powerful. I, I understand that cooking, you know, is stupidly powerful in Cud. Uh, and I just, like, haven't really had, you know, had the wherewithal to sit down and, like, okay, all right, this, what does this do? This does this, and that does that. And uh, if I'm going to want to use this in this circumstance, I'm going to want to use this in this circumstance. And, and hey, I love injector knives. Um, you know, it's... It's just not my, it's not a good 
character trait of mine. I, I'm, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to some s stuff like that. Uh, and speaking of lazy, that's kind of why I don't tend to do cooking in cut is because it's one of the most like labor intensive uh ways of playing the game like it's it's really beneficial like you'll get crazy mutations and even as a true kin it's, it's you know like you'll get all of this really valuable stuff like for instance burrowing claws really really valuable to um, dig into cooking and figuring it out and eventually like my last tutorial episode will be about cooking and gathering but um, there's a couple of things that hold me back. One thing is that um, eventually we get hungry and the the time we spent uh, like oof, trying to get out of that situation. The time we spent uh, cooking and making that recipe this is not a good situation here because these are basically Golgotha juices that are coming up on me um is like not wasted first per se but like you know you, you gotta keep managing it oh i think we just got what is happening oh we have a we have an evil clone i think and uh they also emp'd me <laughs> Uh, sorry, let me try and get back to what I was saying after I've dealt with this situation. Yeah, EMP'd. Everything is EMP'd. I'm just gonna have to kind of wait so that I'm not EMP'd anymore. There we go. Uh, losing blue gel. Okay, we're, we're getting to the spicy phase of, of underground. Um, I was going to suggest, and I know I, I don't like to do, like, I think this should be added to CUD, but I would love this as a mod, I guess, is the ability to basically toggle binge mode, which would be, would, which would be uh, like, you could even make this a skill. Make this a skill that costs 100 skill points. That's fine. Um, because it is a very powerful thing that I'm suggesting here. Uh, but I would love it if you could set a toggle that made it so that your character would automatically eat snacks to maintain their, uh, you know, their, their, their food abilities for as long as possible. Now I do know, I should say this right now, I know there's a uh, ability already that kind of does this, which is self-discipline, and I'm realizing now I should just take self-discipline. Because then we can take fasting away. So let's go ahead and do that. Meditate. Oh, we need more willpower. <laughs> so I just took self-discipline. Your skill at maintaining. This will mean we have meditate. Um, okay, well, we need more willpower, clearly. I, uh, I really undervalue willpower. Do I have charge? I don't. Okay. That was a little bit spicy. Um, I undervalue willpower. I understand that, and it probably bothers people, and I don't blame you. Uh, it, it can't really change it. I just find uh, willpower is a, like not a very interesting stat to upgrade. But yeah, like if I could set a mode that my character will just like automatically keep like eat snacks and then, you know, snacks are regarded as like jerky and bread and stuff. Like there's a, a few foods that are, are considered to be snacks. And if you eat them, then they prolong the effects of, you know, what you're what you've eaten. OK, can we can we get your ego? I can't believe I haven't gotten the ego yet. So hey, you know what we should do is proselytize a cloneling? Unconvinced. Okay. Let's just go ahead and kill our ourself. 
Oof, I don't like that. You don't really want to, uh... Yeah, and that's why. You don't want to find a, a slime, oh, like that, and, like, right in front of you. They're best kept far away. So we're hungry. Anyway, that's my thought regarding cooking and gathering. There's a lot of uses of it, and I do eventually make use of it, but I, I have a select few recipes and ingredients that I like to play with. Um, namely, bone dust because it increases our AV, and also Hulk honey injector because it increases our strength. Hugely valuable. Love it. Love, love to uh, get increase our AV. And uh, you, you can you can you die? That uh, that fellow is gonna appear again. So someone was saying, I think it was Gavin was saying it's a good idea to just like follow these guys around and then just disassemble. Yeah, they're dynamic tinker turret tinker. So they're just gonna make a bunch of random t tinkers or turrets. Better to kill the turrets than to um Oh, they just got killed by their own turret. Oh, that sucks, dude. Oh well. We did just get a nuclear cell though. Uh, that put me over. We should set a couple of these to be treat as scrap because uh, I can't really afford to keep taking them anymore, including lead acid. Uh, I'll keep the lead acid one in case you know. Could, I guess no. We we've got we've got tons of um, what you call it canteens. We don't need to be carrying those. Treat these as scrap, and then. Um, I guess I'll oil stain nuclear cell. I'll disassemble used nuclear cells. Oh wait, don't don't treat them as scrap. Nuclear cells are great. I don't I don't want to uh, disassemble those by default. So we, oh, what is that? That's a twinning memory eater. Memory eaters. Okay, so um, someone was said in the comments that the memory eaters steal your secrets. They don't, uh, they don't remove your XP or SP. At least I don't think they do. Which is good, because that would be broken and I would hate that. <laughs> um. But yeah, we're gonna get some pretty powerful bits pretty soon, because we're 21 strata deep in this ruin. Things are gonna get, uh... I just realized one of the staircases got blown up. And is now uh, a, a tunnel. Oh, you fall down a deep shaft. Okay, so that sucks. Pretty sure the sap, life sap permanently drains your life by one. Oh my god. Hate that. Um, yeah, that means that basically this ruin, you can't get out of it without recoiling, which is fine. I don't think that's a major problem. Yeah, these, these guys are kind of a problem, aren't they? They do give us quite a lot of uh, XP. We're famished. I was kind of um, waiting for us to become inspired again because we've been, been being very inspired lately. Uh, actually, I don't want to use my canned have at all. If I'm not inspired. Why don't we use this here cycle gland paste? And why not? Sliced bop cheek. That'll give me give me an idea of what these ingredients do. Reveals a secret to you plus 52 electric resist. So I guess it uh, gives you rubber based effects. I think I did know that. Uh, I am going to call the episode to a close very soon. But I'll do one more floor. That was a rocket turret tinker. Yeah, you don't want to let that guy do do their thing. That would not be clever. Rocket turrets are one of the few things that can actually, like, destroy me. At, at this stage. Um, speaking of that, I do want to replace our mittens. Because I think that higher AV would be better 
then uh, resistances. We we really only fought resistant um, things that did like elemental damage on the surface. So Mercurials uh, really don't stand a chance against us because we have more than a couple of ways of re reflecting their damage back at us. Uh, at them, sorry. So I, I, I think t twinning, um, tr sorry, trinning? What are these things called? Trinning lampreys are um, probably mark the end of this ruin because I don't really have a good way of dealing with these yet. It's like completely luck based if I manage to kill them. You basically have to kill all three at once. And I mean, I do have enough cloning, clones to make that happen. But it's still a total crapshoot. I think I did do it. I didn't see the experience, though. I didn't see any experience made. Oh, is that a rocket turret? No, that was a low light laser turret. Trinnings are, uh, yeah, they're a real pain in the butt. But yeah, I was saying, Mercurials don't really have a hope and chance to, uh... Oh, we're, we're at humors now. Gyro humors. That's a problem. They just like to change, kind of, like, arbitrarily to different flavors, don't they? I don't think we get much to uh, from from the urchin whalers anymore. We're at like 31 experience. I don't know if we have enough books to justify a trip to the stilt, but we must be kind of getting up there. We're at 25 strata deep. I think I just heard a chrome pyramid. I heard a little ping and uh, that scares me a bit. Uh, at a certain level of depth, it's not really worth exploring anymore. We're going to go back to Eid Freehold. I do want to go to the stilt. I don't know if I'm going to go to the stilt this episode. But, uh, you know, we, we got some stuff. I, I would say, honestly, overall, um, this tr the trip to the ruins was kind of fruitless. Wasn't didn't really find a lot of things. Nav, what does this do? Nav when powered up and booted up, this item enhances navigation. Yeah, well, let's grab that. Oh, we have some some good bits. Uh, really, just a, a, uh, the the nano matter is fine. Resonance. Um, do I did I already grab visage? I think I already did. I can't. I think antimatter cell is better than nuclear cell, but I think it's Tinker Three. It is Tinker Three. So I don't think we'll... Oh, fitted with filters. I'm pretty sure we do need that. Let's grab one of these as well. I'm not sure what that is. We're just going to grab all of that. What is a chrome mantle? Oh, yeah. Um, could t t actually kind of worth it, but no. Wow. Oh, these Kaleidocera muffs are actually like stupidly powerful or uh, valuable. And I guess I don't have any books. I don't know what happened to my books. Um, well... Yeah, let's sell this. No, we have a lot of water. So I, I should actually just, like... Make use of that water. I, I'd love to learn how to make these EMP grenades. They're kind of expensive, but um, worthwhile. Especially, like, when you're roaming around underground in the ruins. EMP grenades are great. Okay, let's learn how to make some of these. Oh, I already know that recipe. Dang. Lantern. Nav. Um, oh. We should... Oh, we should treat these as scrap. And those are some really good bits. That we just got. We did just get covered in blood, but that's okay. Um, do we... Okay, we have a ton of artifacts here that we need to do. What is this? Phylactery of Hyavrifne Jerurates. What? Is this one of those boxes that does something? An inscription speaks to the Holy Rhombus that... 
The blood of the reclaimed and the honor of digital servitude. What is this? I might have to look this up. High capacity fidget cell. Um, Antimatter cells. Very nice. So uh, that was worth it. Definitely. We, ju we just got some meta crystals. Stun gas grenade is fine. Skillsoft. Awesome. That's a nice little bit of trade. Okay. All right. Um, we should. I should get rid of these sower seeds. They're like a hundred percent not even worth grabbing. Does this guy have anything else? Theta disc for antimatter cell, but that's about it. I have too much to. To. Uh, okay, I'm overweight right now. Like really badly overweight. Um. What would I even sell? Um, the sower seeds. That'll... That won't do it, but it'll get us somewhere. Oh, we should sell some of this junk. Uh, I could just buy some more weirdo artifacts. Perfect. Uh, alright. Let's go to... Well, I guess I just want to go to our plant fellow. check what this guy has. He might have some love injectors. He does not. Sucks. You never have the, the, the love injectors, my dude. I would buy those in a hot minute. Flawless crystal coronet, flawless crystal gauntlets, high energy thermocast. Well, it's good to know that I can get that again if I need to. Um, anything cool? Not really. Eigen Rifle. Jasper Gemstone. That's worth it, for sure. Could sell the Chrome Mantle. I know the Chrome Mantle will be worthwhile later. Um, what do we want to sell in exchange for a Jasper Gemstone? I don't know. Oh, we got a tongue. We got a tongue for tongue-based effects. How much do these weigh? One. Okay, they're not worth selling. Uh, ooh, that flamethrower is worth a pretty penny. I think it's also worth throwing into the technology hole. Oh, it's definitely worth selling this crystal agus. It's 15 pounds. I really do need to get rid of these. Um, what does it take? What do I, uh, I thought that the Eigen Rifle took a meta crystal to, to, to make. Um, I'm just gonna throw a bunch of stuff on here, and that puts us kind of neatly under weight, but not really. So I don't know what the deal is with this phylactery. It's not very valuable. It's okay. I'll have to pony up 41 drams. Sure. Um, do we, we do have two flawless crystal uh, gloves, right? I think I do, but I don't think it mattered because I was choosing not to use them. Well, if I do, they're not, they're not on me. So never mind. So let's check this out. Bionic liver. Oh, oh, I see. They, they sell, um, the other guy sells uh, cybernetics. Good to know. So I, I bought some cybernetics. That's fine. Uh, they weren't super expensive. And in fact, they could be considered trade goods because they were zero cost. So I'm okay with that. Um, that's going to do it for this episode. There's no... It doesn't, uh, it doesn't really benefit me to go to the stilt just yet unless I want to get some more um, data disks, I suppose. I might, in the next episode, uh, consider... Um, like handing in some betel quests because I think we might be able to do that soon or maybe just doing some modding to uh, some of our armor and stuff in any case I hope you enjoyed this episode definitely hit that like button if you can if you enjoyed the episode and consider subscribing for more content like this I'll see you guys next time take it easy